Francis, uh, and uh, so the title of my talk is Semi's Neural Network for Prediction of uh, Long Range Interactions in Chromatin. As you uh, might know, um, chromatin structure, uh, structure is very important for gene regulation because uh, it can uh, significantly affect it uh, and also uh, it can affect transcription uh, regulation. And uh, uh, transcription regulation depends highly on uh, physical interactions between regulatory elements uh, um, like enhancer and promoters that uh, often can be adjacent, uh, maybe uh, sometimes in a linear sense, but sometimes also in a three dimensional sense. And uh, recognizing these uh, 3D interactions has always been a problem in biology. Even if in the last uh, 10 years some new molecular techniques have been uh, uh, introduced for this task, that are uh, uh, chromatin confirmation capture, TC and IC, that are quite effective. But unfortunately, they are also very expensive, both in time and money, and only if some, uh, uh, some labs can afford them. Um, in, uh, while in 2012, uh, Bob Thurman from University of Washington showed that uh, uh, there are some regions in chromatin that are called DNAs1 hypersensitive sites uh, that uh, um, show up when the uh, chromatin is more open. So um, they suggested to use these uh, uh, sites as a measurement of uh, uh, the level of openness of chromatin. And we thought about uh, using this data set as a um, um, as input for a machine learning uh, algorithm able to predict uh, long-range interactions from different places. So we um, um, took the data set that they provided from University of Washington and uh, we created uh, an input matrix with uh, all the uh, chromosome regions uh, on the rows and all the uh, cell types on the columns. Uh, so each uh, row represents a um, chromosome region with the, uh, the chromosome name, the starting locus and the ending locus, and each uh, column is a cell type. And each uh, content of this matrix is the uh, DNA's one identity site uh, intensity that, uh, um, that, I, uh, that I just mentioned. Uh, starting from this uh, input matrix of uh, DHS uh, uh, values, we, uh, for the uh, gold standard, uh, we use the IC interactions uh, discovered by Ibrahman Aiden Lab uh, in uh, uh, released in 2014 as a uh, validation set to uh, understand if our predictions are uh, accurate or not. And um, so it's, it's important to mention that uh, there are some differences in the number of cell types because the DNA's input uh, set uh, uh, has uh, um, data for 82 cell types, while the IC data set only for 8 cell types. And there are only 4 intersections uh, and that are the, uh, um, the cell types that I show in, uh, in purple. But this, uh, we will uh, um, say more later. Um, we uh, started from the uh, um, interactions found in the IC data set and uh, for each couple of uh, chromosome regions present in this uh, data, we assign the label true and uh, as an uh, existing uh, uh, interaction, while we assign the label false uh, to the uh, couplings of uh, chromosome regions that were absent from this uh, IC data set. So this way we were able to uh, attribute our scientific problem to a, a supervised learning problem. And uh, then we replaced uh, the names of the, um, of the uh, chromosome regions with the um, DNA values that you can see here that uh, we just introduced before. And uh, so we had, um, um, get to have a, a matrix made of two profiles and one label stating if the interaction is uh, existing in the uh, validation set or not. To give an idea, for chromosome 21, we have around uh, 33 chromosome regions with uh, 32 million, 33 million of uh, possible interactions, and uh, while in the gold standard data set, we have around 200,000 IC interactions. We uh, consider only the interactions with the, the distance uh, because in the original uh, Bob Thurman um, paper, it, there was this constraint. And as a um, as algorithm, uh, we um, used a, a semi neural network. We tried some uh, algorithms that didn't work. Then we talked to the original man that is uh, um, 
here at the Computer Science Department of the University of Toronto, and he suggested us to use this uh, semi-neural network that was introduced uh, 20 years ago uh, by Yane Kuhn for the detection of forgeries among uh, unwritten signatures. And it was uh, working this way. So um, there are two uh, neural networks in parallel, and uh, each uh, um, neural network, for example, the upper one, will record the uh, data of uh, uh, unwritten signature, that is like the speed of the hand, the position of the characters, uh, and all the data that uh, are related to the signature uh, through a pad, a device. And uh, we'll uh, pre-process process it, uh, process this data, and learn a hidden representation of it. And the same thing will be done by the lower uh, neural network. And at the, at, the, at the end of this architecture, there will be a distant measure, like a cosine similarity that will compare the two hidden representations of these two uh, neural networks. And it'll, um, this design distance will uh, state at the end if the two um, uh, signatures are from the same person, if they are original, or if uh, one of them is a forgery. And so we adapted this approach to our uh, problem in which we uh, took the uh, DNA signal of the first chromosome region that uh, was processed uh, uh, by an upper um, a neural network that, that learns the uh, hidden representation of the chromosome region profile. And the same thing is done by the second uh, chromosome region profile with uh, uh, its corresponding DNA signals. And uh, finally, the two um, hidden representation of these uh, chromosome region profiles are compared with the cosine distance and uh, a label of cosine or um, true or false is assigned. Where the cosine distance uh, is a geometrical uh, similarity measure that states that if two vectors are in the same direction, it gets a value around 1. If they, are, they, have, uh, um, they form an angle of 90 degrees, they have a value around 0. And if they are in the opposite direction, the value will be around uh, minus 1. So from minus 1 to plus 1. And, uh, and that's it. And then um, uh, here we will uh, compute the uh, confusion matrix by taking advantage of the gold standard label from the uh, um, high C data set that I mentioned before. And we are now in session uh, phase before to uh, understand, to optimize the hyperparameters of this uh, neural network, like the number of hidden layers, the number of hidden units. And uh, so we did it on independent uh, uh, training set and validation set. So I need map to uh, understand uh, more or less the, the values, sorry, so the legend is too, too small. And uh, we optimize, made this optimization uh, by selecting the model that was uh, leading to the higher matrix correlation coefficient instead of the um, receiver operating characteristic curve or uh, the precision recall curve because um, we believe that uh, um, the matrix correlation coefficient is able to um, uh, take into account more the, uh, the size of the classes of the confusion matrix. And we assigned uh, the threshold of uh, uh, the um, um, prediction to uh, 0 0.5, but that corresponding to 0 in the design distance. It's um, some results for, um, uh, the, um, for the linear test we did on a training set of around uh, 20,000 uh, data set, uh, so uh, matrix correlation efficient for all the um, uh, chromosomes uh, that were positive uh, between plus 0 0.25 and 0 0.77 uh, and uh, accuracy values uh, from 0 0.77 to 0 0.92. Uh, so uh, I am running out of time. The, this was the first part in the prediction model in which uh, we uh, just take into account all the cell types in the training set and all the cell types in the test set. And we say that uh, if uh, an interaction exists in at least uh, one uh, cell type, then it would be a true interaction. We also uh, developed uh, another um, uh, mode in which we uh, try to do cell-specific uh, predictions. So for example, we exclude the uh, IC interactions from the training set of this uh, cell type while in the test uh, from the training set, while in the, tra in the test set we only use the uh, um, interaction of this particular cell type. So we want to see if uh, by training on all the 
um, the cell types excluding one particular one, and then testing uh, on that particular uh, cell type works. And um, so we also modified the architecture a little bit, and uh, we got still got uh, um, encouraging results with multiple ratio coefficient between 0 0.19 to 0 0.39, and accuracy between 0 0.68 and 0 0.84. And then we are um, run a comparison with a previous tool. It's able to uh, also to do this external uh, specific. Uh, set the predictions like repo and we uh, got the precision recall curve, R and R curve uh, uh, better than them. And uh, the final, final goal is to get uh, uh, for each possible interaction to state uh, if uh, it was uh, found by the top term at University of Washington and if it was found by uh, Lieberman Aiden and if it was retrieved by our semi network. So I want to thank my supervisor, Michael Hoffman, Richard Demand, for just the idea, and I found it being and Kobe Weiner for all the help in this Thank you. Questions? So, uh, where do you want to take this next? Um, we want to try to take advantage of. Uh, uh, the uh, interactions that maybe are available for two uh, set types instead of only one, and uh, maybe modify the architecture of the of our semi neural network uh, accordingly in order to maybe uh, make uh, uh, some of these input neurons uh, behave differently if the set type uh, if the is uh, for two set types. The Any other questions? Yes. So just based on the co-occurrence of them in different cell types, it's predicting, like, is there a precision problem, basically? Like, is it just predicting things that occur in the same cell types more often interact than, like, that are enhancers in the same cell types? Oh, we say that I'm just that wondering how, how does it get the specificity information? Because not every set of enhancers that interact, that is present in two cell types in both interacts with each other. How does it distinguish that? And in this case, in the first mode that we developed, uh, we say that only if, it's, if the uh, interaction is present at least one uh, cell type, then it's the correct uh, cell. It's the correct interaction. And uh, but what we want to do now is to uh, rearrange the architecture in order to say if uh, an interaction is true not only for one cell type but maybe for four cell cell types then it means that probably it will be present also for other cell types with a higher likelihood. I hope I get a question. Other questions? Okay, well thank you very much. Great.